You know, when I talk about food plots, you know, most of us look at it as an attractant. Um, in some states, we can't pour corn on the ground or powders on the ground, which you guys, you know, have different uh, deer attractants. Mm -hmm. So we got to use stuff we can grow out of mm -hmm. the ground. And, and we look at that and I say, oh, here's my attractant. But I also look at in the last seven years that Larry and I have been putting Whitetail Institute product in the ground, the improvement in our, the quality of our deer is incredible. Two weeks ago, a deer I've hunted for five or six years called the beer can buck walked in front of my stand and dropped this. I can't get, I cannot get my hands around that. That's over seven inches. Now these are not pinned up deer, mm -hmm. free ranging deer. And the picket fence deer that you guys have used in some of your articles came from this same farm. And the, the, the quality of deer, and it's got to be nutritional value that's doing this. Yeah, yeah it is. It's something that, um, you know, I mean, that's, that's world class, wherever you are, uh, the kind of mass. And I mean, and it, you know, there's just a lot of nutrition that goes into growing these things. You mentioned something earlier, you know, there's no three things going to affect how big these are. Number one is the genetics which we can't really control in a right. wild free ranging herd. Uh, number two, we can control, that's age. Preferably, we hope to get the deer to four, five, six, seven years old, if we can. If we can get them that age and feed them good all the way along the way, you got an opportunity to produce world-class deer. And again, in Illinois, or Iowa, some of those Midwestern states, you come to Alabama, you know, if you're looking for a 170 inch deer, you know, you're probably gonna be here a while. Uh, we don't generally, we, we grow a few of those, don't get me wrong, but those are rare. But what you can do with your property by improving the nutrition that's available to the animals that live on it, you can have the best deer in the vicinity, in your neighborhood, if you will. In other words, if 160 class deer is average in your area, we can bump that up to 170, 180, hopefully. In Alabama, average deer, whatever, 110, 120, we hope that we can get them to 130, 140. I mean, and this is one of the most amazing things there is. It's the fastest growing tissue in the animal world. And you can imagine something like this is grown in a matter of, you know, 180, 200 days. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of you ought to be able to just sit there and watch it grow, but that's a whole lot of bone. And, and this a hardened antler like this is 45% protein, 55% mineral. As it starts to grow out of the head in the spring, what's not blood and water, but as it starts to grow is 80% protein. Now, why do I say that? As a rule, research has shown deer need about 16 to 18% protein, average protein in their diet each day during the antler growing process to have an opportunity to express their full genetic potential. For example, Imperial white clover can provide up to 35% protein. It's one of the first things to green up in the spring. They're going to be wearing it out in the spring and that's going to translate into bigger antlers to follow in fall. So by providing a, a high protein food source in the spring and summer months, not only are you helping bucks grow better quality antlers, but also the does are in the third trimester of pregnancy when most of the fetal growth occurs. Right. Plus a higher protein diet will help her produce more milk for her fawn, which is gonna help that fawn get off to a faster start. And again, the fawns are gonna be the deer that we're hunting four, five, six years from now.